Well, hello there. Thank you for joining us. How was your Thanksgiving? Did you have a good time together? Did you get all your shopping done on Black Friday? Uh, it was awesome for me because since we do most of our shopping online now, my wife just sent out a bunch of things that she wanted and I had to click buy after putting my credit card information in and I'm pretty much done. No big deal. How did you do? Did you go out on Black Friday and brave the uh, probably smaller crowds this year or you still got some shopping to do? In either case, we're happy to be back. My name is Pastor Josh. And uh, we're starting a new series today uh, after having last week off. So I have a couple quick announcements first, and then we'll dive into the first half of our lesson. So um, this Friday is the Progressive Dinner. It's going to be two days from now, 630. The uh, link to sign up for it is going to be in the description of this video. So be sure and sign up for that if you're planning on coming. We're doing it all in the church so we can break up into groups of, uh, of eight to 10 and rotate between the rooms. Um, that way uh, we don't have large groups in vehicles, we don't have large groups in small houses and we can keep it uh, much safer and according to regulations. Uh, we're planning to have all the meals individually um, individually handed out so that you're not like, uh, not digging into the same pot of food and uh, just do everything we can to make it a really fun, really cool night that's also uh, very safe for everyone involved. I hope you can come. We'd love to have you there. Be sure and bring a gift, um, 10 to $15 max, um, or uh, just some white elephant gift that you have around the house to give away. Something cool, something funny. We are going to do a white elephant together, and we're going to have a fun time. So that's Friday night. Um, I also want to let you know, we have the giving tree, which we do every year, and that's where we um, have ornaments on a tree that have uh, things that people need and you can take an ornament off, buy the gift, put it on a box, and give it back. This year, uh, we're partnering with four different ministries and one of them pertains to youth specifically. We're trying to get uh, snow clothes for some youth up in Madras that don't have snow clothes. And so hopefully if everything works out, we're gonna do a big tubing event to replace our locking party um, up on the mountain and if we do, we would love to have some of these kids from Madras come join us. Um, but if they don't have snow clothes, they really can't go up on the mountain. And so um, talk to your family, uh, pray about what it would look like to get uh, maybe one or two kids a snow coat and donate to that. You can uh, figure out more by contacting the office. Just call the Ben Naz office or email Tori at Tori at Ben I uh, want to let you know what our Christmas schedule is going to look like with Christmas coming up. Of course, you know, pending all sorts of changes. Um, this Wednesday, uh, we are, we are, today, we are back in the building in groups of 25. Uh, if everything goes according to plan, the following Wednesday, we'll be back to kind of what we were before the Thanksgiving lockdown. Um, but we are going to take off the 23rd and the 30th. We're going to take those two Wednesdays off. And so you will be with your families. Many of you will be traveling, but just plan to not be here on those two Wednesdays. Uh, we will have a great Christmas Eve service. We've got an awesome plan for that uh, night before Christmas and, and Sunday services will continue as normal. And so just mark that on your calendar that that's what we're going to do. All right. We're starting a new series, as I mentioned called Cabin Fever, and it's a Christmas series uh, piggybacking on what many of us are feeling, right? What is cabin fever? Cabin fever is when you're locked in a place, when you're stuck in a place to the point where you start getting like jittery and anxious, and some people actually have like delusions and start seeing things, and it gets, it gets crazy, you know, if you get stuck in a cabin for too long. And this is what we've been going through, right? We've been stuck in our homes and maybe, I mean, I hope that you haven't been going crazy. If you have, uh, give me a call and I'll pray for you. <laughs> but um, whatever, uh, whatever you're going through, there's for most of us like this tension and this anxiety and this restlessness inside, right? Like just, oh, just can't um, settle down, can't be in a place of peace. And and I know that, that COVID is a big part of this because we are stuck at home. We are um, in this place with all these extra anxieties from 2020. 
But if we're honest, um, this is not just from COVID. Because for many of us, we have times where we feel that sense of restlessness in our hearts and in our souls um, and trying to do something about it and trying to find a place of peace and trying to look for different avenues and look for different strategies or, or even coming to the conclusion that this is just how our life has to be, which is stressed and, and filled with unrest. And then Christmas can add a whole new dimension, right? Because there's this expectation that we should be at peace and that we should be filled with happiness and joy and it's a great time of year. And um, sometimes that can make it worse. You know, like if you've ever been in a really bad mood and someone comes up to you and they're like, well, you just need to be happy, right? Like you need to turn around. It makes you feel worse. It makes you feel even more angry. And so for Christmas, there creates this, um, there creates this, expectation of what things should be like it doesn't necessarily match up with what we're feeling in our hearts i mean look at this look at this picture that i've got for you i'm going to try to share some stuff today so this is a picture of the nativity scene and you know obviously something that we see a lot that um is a big part of the season and look at it i mean they're celebrating they're peaceful, they're together, they're happy, there's a star shining over the top, and it's just this setting of like, oh, everything is wonderful. And for many of us, if we're honest, like we can't relate to that. And so then, then you have this option of like being fake, right? And just pretending everything's good and pretending you're happy or being that guy, you know, that girl, it's like the, the Grinch about everything going on. I had a friend who loved Christmas and they always talked about how Christmas was the most amazing time of year. They love Christmas, but they would tell these stories of their family during Christmas that their family would always fight and get in these big, huge arguments and and kids were mad at the presents they got and someone else was mad about something with the food. And, and I'm kind of like, well, which one is it? Like was, was Christmas an amazing memory or was it horrible? There's like this disconnect, like, yeah, this is what Christmas is supposed to be, but this is what was actually happening inside my heart at Christmas. The, the thought of Christmas and the expectation versus the reality of Christmas to feel that difference. But what if there didn't have to be that difference? What if the peace that is embedded in the heart of Christmas is something that you could feel deep inside of your heart as well in a really genuine, authentic sense? How can we move towards that place of inner peace? That's what we're going to talk about for the next two weeks. Now, to get there, I want to start with uh, reading you a really strange verse in Ephesians. It uses some language that is a little weird, but we're going to unpack it a little bit. It's in Ephesians 1.18. Uh, the Apostle Paul is writing this, and he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know hope to which, know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance to his holy people. Now, what's so weird about this is he's talking about eyes in our heart, right? That's, that's a weird thing. Like eyes in our heart. Our heart doesn't have eyes. Our head has eyes. So, so what, what is this that he's trying to unpack? That there's these eyes in our heart that actually see the world differently than our physical eyes see the world. So like with your natural eyes, you see a person you can see that they're there. You can see their color and their shape and, and things about them. But to see a person with the eyes of your heart is to be inspired by them, to be uh, fixated on them, to be deeply moved on a soul level. So you can see a person and not be inspired, not be deeply moved by what they are or who they are. And so he's beginning to say, what are you looking at with the eyes of your heart. Now, here's another way to explain this concept. So many times I've interviewed people, right? I've interviewed people for jobs. I've interviewed people to be volunteers uh, for the youth group. And um, one of the questions that I will ask sometimes, not always, but sometimes I will ask 
who are some people that you look up to, right? And essentially the question is, who are the people that the eyes of your heart are focused on? And the reason I ask it is because whoever those people are, that is who the person's going to become like, right? Whoever the eyes of their heart are fixed on is going to direct their life in that direction to be more like them. So if you have someone in an interview and you say, who do you look up to? Who do you inspire you? And they're like, you know what? I look up to Homer Simpson. He really inspires me. And, and obviously that's an extreme example, but it kind of indicates to you, this may not be a person I want to work with because Homer Simpson embodies, you know, laziness and um, anger issues and all sorts of other things that are probably going to cause problems. Um, so who are the eyes of your heart looking to? So again, coming back to our problem of restlessness and unease that maybe that's an indication of who our hearts are looking to for peace and for hope. And if we look to Jesus, um, even as a baby, right, in the story of Christmas, uh, and made him the focus of our hearts, what if there was this other worldly peace that only comes with drawing closer to him and making him our focus and could we experience that peace for ourselves? Um, as Jesus grew up later in his life, uh, in it's recorded in John 14, verse 27, Jesus says this. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. And I, I don't give as the world gives. So don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. Now, now, if our hearts, the eyes of our hearts are fixated on Jesus, this verse is a total game changer. This is a life-changing verse, just with a couple different sentences. I mean, just imagine, like, Jesus looking at you, looking in your eyes and saying these words, like, I have peace for you. I am giving my peace to you. And it's not the type of things that you've tried that haven't worked. And, and so don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. Um, we're going to stop there for tonight. Um, but what I want you to do, this is your challenge coming out of this, is that um, how would your life be different if the eyes of your heart were focused on Jesus? to really think about what that would mean, especially during the season. What if the eyes of my heart are focused on Jesus in a way that they never have been before? And next week, we're going to unpack what makes his peace so unique, what makes his peace more, uh, ex excuse me, more extraordinary than any peace that the world has to offer or any fake things that promise peace. But for this week, how would my life be different if the eyes of my heart we're focused on Jesus coming into this Christmas season. So let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll close. Father, thank you so much for this time together. I do pray that we would see you more clearly and that the eyes of our hearts would be captivated, captivated by the peace that you offer. God, even in the midst of everything going on, that your peace would calm our hearts and put us at ease, and that we would trust in you like never before. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll see you guys next week. Uh, some of you I might see at the Progressive Dinner. We would love to have you there. And uh, be safe. We will see you soon.